check it out. Look what I made. Is it this cool? You want to learn how to make one too? Then come along with me while we leaf cast some different leaves. Welcome everybody. My name is Michelle and you are at Gardening with the Landscape Connection and my channel is all about gardening. So not only do we garden, but we also sometimes do DIY projects and today you're going to learn how to leaf cast one of these with leaves from your own yard. So come on. There's lots of leaves that you can use when you're doing leaf casting, but one of the things that you're really looking for is not necessarily what the veining looks like on the top of the leaf, but what the veining looks like on the bottom of the leaf. So these are elephant ears that we uh, planted, and they're not very big, but the, see how the veining is here on the back? So this is really, really a good leaf for uh, doing your leaf casting. Hosta leaves are really good, and so are oak leaf hydrangea leaves. And let's see, some other ones I've used have been rhubarb leaves. Those are really good. And there's a few house plants. But what you're really looking for, again, is look at the back of the leaf and look for the veining on there because that's what we're going to cast. Okay, so you know what? This is really super easy to do. So what are the supplies that you need? Well, like I said, you obviously need a leaf. So we're going to use that elephant ear that we just went and cut. We also need saran wrap, okay? We need some pan spray, and this is optional. I like to use it because I think it helps release uh, the leaf easier off of the concrete, so I like to use it. Any pan spray will work. I don't recommend using the butter flavor, though, because it does leave a little bit of a stain on your leaves. So any kind of pan spray that's not butter. Then you need uh, some concrete. Now, I like to use the vinyl patch. And the reason I like this is because it's really super smooth. There's not a lot of rock or aggregate in it, so it allows me to create this leaf that's really super smooth. Now, the leaves are a little bit heavier, but I'm okay with that because I'd rather have smooth. Now, if you wanna make a lighter leaf, you can mix things in like uh, peat moss or things like that, and they call it hypertufa, and you mix the concrete with the peat moss to make it lighter. I don't really like the texture of what that looks like, so I don't do it that way. So I just use the vinyl patch. You can find this in little bags, just like this at like a box store, like a Menards or a Home Depot or a Lowe's or something like that. They sell them in bigger bags too. So with this, I could probably cast probably three leaves this size with one bag of the concrete mix. And I don't have to mix the whole bag up at once if I don't want to. I can use what I'm gonna mix or mix what I'm gonna use and then put the rest away and it holds really well as long as you don't get it wet. The other thing you need is if you have any holes or tearing in your leaves, you will need masking tape because you use the masking tape on the back side of the leaf to cover up the holes. That way your concrete doesn't ooze through any ripping. You also need, I like to wear gloves. And so I don't use latex glove. I will use the thicker, like, you know, the kitchen gloves, like um, the big long ones like this that you would use to clean your sink or your toilet or something. So I like the longer, the longer gloves to use. And then a spoon, or you can just get right in there with your hands. Uh, I'll start with a spoon and I usually end up in it with my hands mixing it up. And water, and then a container to mix it in. Another ingredient you need that I don't think I mentioned is you need sand. And so you can buy a bag of like leveling sand at a box store as well, but that's what we're gonna use to mold our leaf on. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my gloves on. This is step one, okay? Then I'm going to take my concrete mix and I'm gonna pour it into the container. And you probably do wanna stand back when you drop this because it does make a little bit of a dust and if you don't want to breathe that in, either wear a mask or stand back when you pour it. And I have got about a third of a bag in here. And as you can see, this is really super fine. It's not, you can't see like aggregate or rock in it. And that's why I like this. All right, now you're going to add your water. Now, when you add your water, add it a little at a time. Because with concrete, you have to, you know, if you get it too thin, then you got to add more mix. And then you might end up with more than you want. And I'll tell you, a little bit of water goes a long ways with concrete. So here I'm pouring in maybe like a third of a cup to get me going. I like to mix with my hands because I think it's easier. But if you feel like you need to use a spoon, use a spoon. Make sure you get down underneath and you're pulling up underneath so that you're getting all of that concrete mixed. Yep. All right, remember a little bit of water and add a little at a time because you want to be able to make sure you have the right consistency. So what I'm going for is Play-Doh, okay? 
I want it to bind together, but I don't want it to be runny. And I want to make sure that I'm scooping up from the bottom. And that's why I use my hand because I think it's so much easier to grab the concrete at the bottom. See, and I'm only adding maybe a quarter to a third of a cup at a time. See how much it really absorbs the water? And before you know it, it's gonna be the consistency you want. See, that's it, look, I'm there. That's the consistency I'm going for right there. I want it to be able to adhere to my leaf, but not slide off. And the longer this sits, the thicker it'll get. So if you get it a little bit too thin, just let it sit for a minute. The next thing you have to decide is, do you want your leaf to be cupped when you uh, form it, or do you want it to be flat? So depending on that, you either are gonna mound your sand up like this, and you do want your sand to be a little bit damp. So think about making sandcastles when you were a kid, and to be able to form those sandcastles, you had to have a little bit of water in your sand. So I actually want my leaf to be flat. So I am going to carve this so that I can lay the leaf in here flat, because I am going to make mine into a dish. And so when I lay the leaf on here and it's perfectly flat like this, See, I want that. If I wanted it to be cupped, then I'd mound it. But you want sand underneath all parts of the leaf when you're molding the sand to fit your leaf. The next step is to take your saran wrap and you're gonna cut the pieces of saran wrap to cover your sand. And the reason you're doing that is because you don't want sand to get mixed into your concrete when you're forming your leaf. So you want a barrier between the leaf and the sand so that way you don't have the sand mixing in. So it's okay if you do a couple of different sheets on here, but I'm just gonna make sure that I cover all of the sand. And sometimes I think it's easier to do it if I take the saran wrap out of the box. Okay, so there's one piece and then I'm gonna take, whoa, I have a little bit of wind in here. Sometimes this is easier to do if you have a partner to help you too. And it's okay if it's folded a little bit. This time I'm gonna put something right here so it doesn't blow away. Okay. And then I'm gonna get my second piece. Just hold that with my hand and come over the top and come all the way to the other side. And I'm gonna take my spoon this time and hold it down. All right. All right, there we go. There's my saran wrap. And all this is doing is keeping the sand from mixing with my concrete that I'm gonna put on top of my leaf. But the other thing I wanna do is see, I do have this stem on here and I am gonna cut this stem all the way down to the bottom here. Now I don't have a hole, okay, but I cut it as flush as I could so that when I go to put the concrete on, I don't have a big hump here, but I don't have a hole here either. Okay, so see how close I cut that? All right, so then I'm gonna put the leaf on my sand and you want the sand to come out further than the leaf, not just to the edges, so a little bit further than the leaf. And then I'm gonna take my pan spray all right, and I'm gonna coat the back of my leaf. And this is to help the concrete release after I'm done putting it all on top of there. So I just put a layer of the pan spray on there and now I'm ready to put my gloves on and put my concrete on top of the leaf. All right, so I've got my concrete here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the concrete and I just plop it basically on top of the leaf and then I just slowly start to push it out towards the edges. Now the goal here is to get it to the edges, but to have it be the same thickness throughout. So you don't wanna push it to the ends and just keep pushing it and then it's really super thin. If you've ever made a biscuit before, you know how you wanna get the dough all the same length. Now one of the things that you can do, maybe bring the camera over here, is see how I hold my hand against the edge of the leaf and I'm going to push it up to the edge of my hand here and create a thickness. But I don't wanna go underneath the leaf because if I go underneath the leaf, then this will form underneath here and it won't have a pattern on it. So only to the edge of the leaf and use your hand as a guide. See, and I just keep pushing it out this way. And then what I'm doing is I add more to the middle and then I push it out, push it out. And as I'm going, see, I get that edge all done. And I just keep adding concrete and even on the tip. See, and I'm gonna use my hand here as that guide. And I'm gonna get that all over, okay? I gotta do this little area right here. And see, I don't have a lot left right now. That's pretty much all that's left. And I don't think I'm gonna need much more unless I wanna make a stand for this, which I can do with some of my leftover. So it's a little thick there. I'm just gonna move that out of the way. 
Okay, now if your concrete starts to dry out on you, add a little bit of water to it and bring it back down. You can also have some water ready to go next to you. And so to smooth out some of your fingerprints and whatnot, put your hands in the water and then just shake off the excess and just have like a little bit of water on your hands and you can use your hands to smooth. Make sure you don't lose the guide that you just created with your hand. But see, you can go in here, see how I'm kind of just smoothing everything out. I just have a little bit of water on my hands, okay? Then the other thing you can do is if you want this to lay flat, you can like just pat its little bottom right here and you can make like a flat spot there. The other thing you can do is if this was a cupped one that you wanted to make into a bird bath, then you could do the imprint of the bird bath stand into the bottom of this while it's still wet and that way you can create the stand. Now you can create your own stand as well and this is gonna take it a little bit longer to dry, but you can take your extra concrete that's left, okay? And I can go right in the middle here and I can create like a little stand. So this will sit up on a pedestal and I'm just forming it into a square, patting out the bottom. I'm gonna get a little bit of water, just a little bit of water on my finger and I'm gonna smooth that out. See, and now it's gonna rise up a little bit. See? Now I have a little pedestal there. Also, don't be afraid to lift it up. See how I missed a big spot right there? And I do have a little bit of concrete left. Okay, and I can make sure that I get that, that edge right there. Okay, and again, don't be afraid to lift it up gently. And if it cracks a little bit, you can put it back together. But see, you don't want it going underneath, okay? Just to the edge. All right, so I just finished a class this weekend where I had some people come and cast the leaves, so I thought I'd show you what to do after they have dried. They need to dry for, you know, 48 hours, 72 is better, and you want to make sure that they're drying in a fairly warm place, and I don't like them to dry in direct sun. I think they will crack a little faster if you put them in direct sun, and some people will put a garbage bag over the top of them to help them dry better. So this is one that was done uh, three, three days ago. So now that it's done and the concrete has dried, what I wanna do is I just lift it up off of the sand and I pull that uh, saran wrap off. Now remember how I said, if you get the concrete underneath, see how it'll overlap your leaf? And so that's what happens. So hopefully we can just kind of pick some of that off, but see how easy it releases off of there because we put that pan spray on there. Look how easy that lifted off, nice and easy. And so this is hers right here. She did a pretty good job. She missed right here, that's it. Okay, but what I like to do is take a brush and I'll show you the brush and I'll smooth it out. All right, so now we're done. We've got the leaf off of it. See my grill brush? It's just one of those grill brushes that you buy at a box store. And I think I actually got this one at the dollar store. And I just take the brush and I go along the edges and I kind of just smooth the edges out. And I'll take this side here. See how I just get any of the cragginess, I guess I'll call it. Now I can't do anything about this where she overlaps underneath the leaf, but I can smooth out the edges. And I mean, she did a really good job because there's not a lot of smoothing. Now, if you need to go get some sandpaper, go for it. I think that this works just fine right here. And I just get the rough edges off. Okay, and then I'll just take a brush to get off any soot that I got on there. That way it's nice and clean for me to paint it. Okay, so like I don't like this little edge right there. So just look at it, see? See how easy it comes off? But you, you don't wanna beat on it, but you wanna be able to get, you know, the rough edges off. So there you go, there's hers, and it's done and ready for her to come and paint. Isn't that great? Love it. <laughs> Okay, so now you know how to cast the leaves. It's super easy to do. You just have to make sure that you're molding it in the shape that you want it to. See, if you cup the leaf like this and you mound the sand, you'll get a cupped leaf. If you make it flat, you'll get it flat. Now this one again was made with an elephant ear, but see some of these other ones down here were made with little hostas. And you can do with them whatever your imagination, you know, gives you to do with them. I could see this being a trinket dish in the bathroom. You know, I could see this little baby one here being a spoon rest in your kitchen. I could see this flat one being painted in white and then antique. 
and then you spray it with polyurethane and you could use it as a serving tray and put cheese and crackers on it. I mean, you don't just have to put them in the garden. There's so many things that you can do with them. This one here, I love this one. I made this one out of an oak leaf or a maple leaf. Isn't that great? That was done out of maple leaf from my house. Rhubarb is another one that makes a really good leaf. So that's what you're looking for, are the veining on the back of the leaf to create the pieces. So now let's paint them. Okay, everybody, I had a great time doing that. I hope that was helpful and you maybe want to try your hand at leaf casting. Again, here's how our peacock one turned out. I like this one. I'm going to put it in my garden. Then I have my one that I tried to do the pantina with. It's not quite pantina, but I do like it. We're going to use it as a plate at our garden party. Now, remember, if you're going to use something like this as a plate, you don't put wet food on this, you guys. You put dry food like crackers or maybe grapes or, you know, cheeses or something like that. Nothing that's wet. Uh, but there you go. I'm going to use this at the garden party. And then I think my favorite is this little baby one right here. I love how this turned out. and It looks just like the leaf. So this hasta leaf is a great expectation in case you were wondering. But isn't that great? I think that they, they look kind of like each other. And I'm going to use this one as a trinket dish in my bathroom. So all kinds of things that you can do with leaf casting. So that's all I got for today. I hope you had fun doing this with me and maybe if you wanna try it, this will help you know how to do it as well. I'm Michelle, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye everybody.